so this patient had jaw surgery already. So they're, they're coming to me for revision. And the point is, is like, doc, do the revision and I will be cured. Hmm. And my point is, is look, you know, I don't know <laughs> if you're going to be cured. You, you have these issues on top of, okay, I can identify, yep, the jaw surgery. They didn't counterclockwise rotate you enough. They really didn't push forward into your lip enough. I mean, I can, I can show that the upper incisor is not supporting the upper lip. Uh, so there are positional issues. But I need you to go get a dice because I need to show you and me that there is a real uh, collapse going on. And in this patient too, if I showed you their like volume, and I mean, we know that volume and cross-sectional area are not always great indicators either of airway disease. But is if it, you saw his airway, it was it's like enormous on the cone beam CT volume wise. Your last comment is that because of the 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 radiology and the the position that the patient goes into the scanner can often give you a false measurement of the cross-sectional area, or is it just straight out you can have a big cross-sectional area and still be symptomatic? And still have collapse. It's all the above. Mm. So it's it's exactly what you said. It's it's really interesting because Arnett did this study in the nineties where he showed that how you put the patient in the cephalostat. So this is before three D X rays. It's just you know lateral plane films. How you position the patient in the cephalostat uh, influences the size of the airway and profile. Yeah. So we knew this a long time ago. So yes, uh, is the patient breathing shallow? Uh, is the patient swallowing during the however many seconds during the scan? Right. And then is the patient in natural head position? Right. Those all influence. And I. So can I share one more story? Please. Um, Doctor Arnett and I, we had the second ICAT in California. Um, cone beam CT. Now there were other cone beam CTs, the new tome, you would lie down and, and have a scan, right? So I was so into airway, I thought this is it. I'm going to study airway sizes. I'm going to study airway sizes related to apnea. I'm going to study before and afters of our patients. And I'm going like, this is going to be great. So I spend two years gathering data. I have a ton of data. Again, Dr. Gimino calls and he wants to know how early we can operate kids because he wants to avoid this neurological de uh, degradation, right? So he's like, how soon will you operate? Well, let's come talk about it. So we go up to Stanford and we sit down and talk to him. After, I talked to him, after we talked to him about that, I said, I said Christian, I have, um, I have a lot of data on airway size. Uh, I want to show it to you. So I showed it to him and he, and he looks at me and he goes, this means nothing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is like two years of work, Christian. It, it, it's got to mean something. And he goes, no, these, uh, these x-rays, uh, the patient is sitting upright. He's not asleep. He's, uh, it doesn't mean a thing, you know? And I was like, oh, I guess you have a point. So I took all my data and I just like set it aside which was wrong. I should have published, you know, because it, I mean, it would have been, it would have been all airway analysis studies by at least four years. And I was like, oh, but, but I, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I don't want to bias people to think that airway size matters, but that's honorable the end, of you though. I know it's stupid really. So <laughs> all knowledge is good, whether it's a, you know, it's, it's deciphering. I should have provided the knowledge. True. All knowledge is good knowledge. So, um, but that was his point is like, it's positional, but not just that, just like we talked about, if they have a connective tissue disorder, you have no idea what the collapsibility is. And I have seen, for example, well, I have treated patients where I've advanced their upper jaw nine millimeters at the upper incisor, 21 millimeters at the chin without genioplasty because of counterclockwise rotation. I've taken their airways from a minimal cross-sectional area of about 70 uh, cubic millimeter or uh, square millimeters to 200. And I've only got their AHI down from 30 to 14, right? That's disheartening and disappointing. But is it really? I mean, we did something, we got improvement, but I know they wanted a cure, right? 
thankfully, you know, this patient was consented that you have a connective tissue disorder. This patient in particular had Marfan syndrome, right? So we knew that it wasn't going to be as effective. So back to the airway analysis, you are correct. It is positional. It is functional. It's how they're breathing, whether they're swallowing, but it is also like you have no diagnosis for what the tissues are actually doing back there.